Oh boy, have I got some geek stuff for you. This is proper geek. Drum history, I'm nuts about it. Genuinely nuts about it. It's one of my favorite things to teach back when I was a music teacher, mate, because like the drums were super manky and you're gonna see. I believe this is from the late 1930s, yeah? The modern drummer. Not modern drummer, which is still going. No, 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 this is the modern drummer. I think this is UK. Look at this. <laughs> This was a fancy drum kit, mate. It's got wheels and everything. Genuinely, this is what first cymbal stands were like. You know, most of the drums were played on the kick and snare. Like, man, man he's got hi-hats. That's fancy back in the day. Papa Joe Jones was sacked from like five bands from playing the hi-hats. The fun thing about this, it looks like an independent drum thing. It's not. It basically is just trying to sell your bass and drums. New agent for bass and drums. Look at him. Looks, it looks like he's trying to run away and we caught him. Oh, see, look. Oh, Besson. Oh, look, a new kit. Oh, it's a Besson. <gasps> the stars foretell swing. <gasps> is it a, It's a Besson. That there's a nice pedal, that is. <laughs> look, bar gains, and it's Besson. Besson. It's a Besson. Mate, bass drums, you got a Besson. Snare drums, Besson. Besson. Recondition as new. Pre Ooh, Premier. Ooh, I take that back, actually. Printed in London on your Besson. Ooh, this one. The Zildjian story. Zildjian is ancient. Uh, to cut the huge Zildjian story just a little bit shorter, mate, they've been around for about 400 years. Dead serious, right? And like the original Zildjian was a metal alchemist trying to make a cheap substitute for gold in the Ottoman Empire. And then the Sultan like saw his special formula of bronze and how crazy musical it was. This is only Turkey and it's like this special family tradition handed down to the eldest son for hundreds and hundreds of years. But in the 19 teens, Avidus Zildjian actually moved to America. He basically he relinquished his right to the Zildjian thing. He was a successful candy man until he got this special letter, genuine, like saying that like, it's my time has come, it's your turn now. <laughs> Although he convinced Aram Zildjian to come to America to get it going over there because apparently there was a new hot music going on. It was called jazz. He brought some cymbal smiths over and they learned how to do it in America. Look man, there's Aram, there's Avidus, and like, see, like, it's, they were smacking them out old school style. In the original Turkish factory, they're known as K Zildjans, whereas these new Avidus ones in America are known as A Zildjans. And then for quite some time, they coexisted, although the K side was owned by Gretsch. Boring, boring, we'll get into it later. Oh. The low sock pedal, or known as the low boy. <laughs> That's how old this thing is. But yeah, larger and thinner cymbals. Avidus would hang out at the jazz clubs and talk to these guys and basically birth the modern cymbal as we know it. Roy Haynes, he's still going today. But Roy! But hey, look at this one. <laughs> if you want more propaganda like the first one, <laughs> cymbals today. What they're saying, what they're playing, a short history. Sounds independent, doesn't it? Well, no, they're, they're selling you zins, mate. Yeah, zin symbols, super zins. A short history. Yeah, they existed in Asia. I, I believe they're even mentioned in the Bible. It, it was just Zildjian who came up with like the special bronze that made them sound so amazing. Oh, look at this. In the United States, we're a branch of the Turkish symbol making family estate. They won't mention Zildjian by name. That's fun. Cause no, mate, you want to buy zins. Oh, look. Look at all these up and coming Zin players, mate. We got Eric over here, he plays a Zin. This one's from the late 50s. Look, a letter from Mr. Avidus. Oh, Gene Krupa, this amazing, like first page. Max Roach, Surly Main, you can see the symbols they're using, that's cool. Joe Morello, he, he played the drums in Take 5. Buddy Rich, Legend, Art Blakey, oh, they're, they're all legends, all of these. I'm geeking out, man. I'm just geeking out. That's the face I want to be making. That's a good illustration of the original Avidus. And there's K Zildjian of like the Turkish side that would, you know, all that side of it's named after. There's Aram, and then we're up to Avidus who was still kicking and mate, them Zildjian brothers. Um, they would run the company together, I believe through the seventies. It, it didn't end great. We'll, we'll talk about it. Mate, Pearl Drums, hey, massive name nowadays. This is, 69, nice. Late 60s drums, look at these beauties. Drums are really shallow. At least it wasn't a full toy shop kind of looking thing. This is when the drum kit was a drum kit. Look at these pathetic stands. <laughs> they suck. I've actually got one of these and it just wobbles endlessly. But um, can we appreciate how far away that floor time is? 
You'd have to have a bag of sticks to throw at it to get to it. Oh, the old Japanese factory. It's all made in China and Taiwan now. Yeah, late 60s, I only just started getting multiple toms. Seriously, for the most part, it was just one tom and then a floor tom. Hardware sucked back then. I've got some of these stands, they're terrible. They stink. Oh yeah, these tom arms, look at them. They just punch a hole straight through. And these get all loose and clapped out. Oh, look out, mate, it's 1980. Making symbols is dangerous. <laughs> Foundry explosions are not out of the question. Although this is kind of dumb. See, they've got all these numbers here and you've got to turn the page to then read like, oh, 23 rock hats. Well, it's, uh, well, it's, uh, oh, there they are, the rock hats. Well, something massive happened in the 70s and 80s. You know, I was telling you about the original K Zildjian factory that kept running, even though the, like, the Zildjians came to America and that's where the family was. In the 80s, mate, American Zildjian got the K back. That, like, the last member passed away, the factory got shut down. The new K Zildjian, like, they recreate the sound of the original Ks, named after Kurope. Through the 70s and all that, mate, Zildjian was getting gigantic. They even had a factory in Canada, and a lot of the Turkish symbol smiths came to Canada, because Canada's part of the Commonwealth. You know, America is independent. So there was immigration stuff going on. But the original factory got shut down. What happened to all those amazing symbol smiths working there? Well, two of them started Istanbul. <laughs> Look, there they are. Mehmet and Agop, mate. When they were eight years old, they were working for the Zildjians in the Turkish factory, which was owned by Gretsch at one point. 77 shut down, the original guy passed away. And 81, they kept, they got the old factory going again. These are known as pre-splits. <laughs> Cause in the nineties, I got passed away and then the two families wanted to kind of do their own thing. So it's Istanbul Mehmet and Istanbul Agop. This is when both of them were working together. They're beautiful. I've got some of these, they're amazing. Yeah, man, look, you actually get to see the super old school way how they were doing it. So cool. It's so traditional and fashionable. They're smacking them out one hammer blow at a time. Yes, <laughs> hand drawn adverts man ah oh, late 70s check it out see they always signed both of them Mehmet and Agop and that's just so cool um yeah both companies still killing today Istanbul on a roll you know I told you about the Zildjian brothers that were running it together and I said it you know didn't technically end all that great it, there were disputes one being the older brother one being the younger brother and the older brothers having a son you know and then the son has a place in the company and Robert Zildjian wasn't you know feeling like he was seen as equal well, Robert Zildjian ended up buying himself out of Zildjian he took control of the Canadian factory and founded Sabian. Yep, Sabian was founded by Robert Zildjian and is run today by Andy Zildjian. Sabian's history is Zildjian's history until the 80s. This is a really, really early pamphlet and that's showing a lot of legs, sweetie. Ah, Sabian. It's named after his three kids, by the way, because they knew they didn't really have the big backstory. They could name it anything. And I always love this original Sabian logo. They've changed it. And I've never seen these stamps on a Sabian. I've got lots of vintage Sabians and I've never seen this AA and HH. So cool. Literally, because frozen, because Canada. And yet yeah, Sabian are just still killing it to this day. They've really carved out their own niche. Nice work. You don't want aspirational 80s, you want manky 80s. 1989 Pearl Drums catalog. <laughs> these were the huge days. How many instruments just got gigantic for 10 years? In the 80s, God, these drums are gigantic. You would never want these. They're just so out of date for modern sounds. Unless you're playing old 90s grunge or like, you know, hair metal bands. And then of which, please get them. They did make smaller drums. Those look nice. And long lugs. No, oh, that's so 80s and early 90s. Having them all linked up like this. I really like it. And uh, Pearl made electronic drums back then. <laughs> modern electronic drums actually look convincing, but... <laughs> Look at this huge bit of furniture you need for the computer side. Oh, fantastic. Choo, 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 choo. Notice no symbols. Electronic symbols, not a thing yet, mate. Oh, there is one company I've been neglecting at the moment. Stinking Peisty. At heart, I'm a big Zildjian guy, but gosh, do I love Pisces. My first ever symbols were them. And this looks like a pack of stuff somebody got back in 1990. This all came in the same envelope, so it looks like someone was doing a bit of research. Yeah, Pisces symbols are beautiful. Al Foster, Alex Van Halen, yeah, man. Jeff Picaro, fantastic. Talking about symphonic symbols, that's orchestral. 
Oh, they're gongs. Feisty make amazing gongs. I want like a giant 80 inch gong one day. <laughs> if you look at the price for one of them, 20 grand, you know, back in the 90s, they're honestly like the cost of a large car. <laughs> but I want one so bad. That orange and blue is amazing, but this sound formula sticker, <gasps> Pisces, I know you don't make these anymore, but you gotta put this on a shirt or something. Come on, Pisty, bring it back. And last one, the drums peaked in the 90s, like mid to late 90s, the drum kit was fully evolved and it stopped doing it. You know, like 993 Zildjian, yeah, 370th anniversary, and that means next year, they are 400. Yep, yeah, in search of gold, as I said, you know, he was looking for a cheap substitute for gold and actually made this musical material that's amazing for making symbols out of. I want one of these ingots so bad, Zildjian. You just tell me how much it costs, man, and I'll, I'll pay it, I want it. History, 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 we already know. And yeah, then just legends, mate. You know, Ginger Baker, gosh. Peter Erskine, gosh. Vinny, oh, my actual hero, Dennis Chambers. Love you, Denny. And like Tony Williams, who's basically like the goat of drums in, in a, a lot of people's circles, tragically ripped away from us. Akira Jimbo! I love Cassiopeia! Akira! Ah, Lars Ulrich Metallica! Uh, well, it's fun to plop this back down. <laughs> you see how far we've come. Uh, that's why I love the drums so much. Their evolution's been nuts. They only stopped evolving in the mid to late 90s. There is new stuff coming out, but the, the core way that the drum kit works and its place in music, mate, mid to late 90s. And so, there you go. I've just geeked out for a whole bunch of time sitting on the floor. Bye.